For those that haven't met me, my name is Larry Booker. I've been with Deep Haven Data Lab since January of 2022, and I'm going to talk about update feature. I'm sorry, update by. It's a, a feature we recently added to the community version of our software. Let me share my screen. I'll have a quick presentation of a half dozen slides and then uh, some demonstration of the feature in Python and Groovy. So. All right, can anybody see that? Yeah, it looks good. Yes. Okay, all right, so update by. Let's talk about first, uh, okay. Let's use cases, considerations, and really what it does. So update by evolve because there's some things that are really difficult to express with the current tools. And um, in this case, expressive cross row calculations, of which the classic example is cumulative sum. And so to do cumulative sum, you really have to know the cumulative sum of all the prior rows, add the current row value, and then continue that through every operation. And it's just important to note that if you modify a single row, the every following row has to be recomputed. And um, that's possible with some of the engine operations. Now, for example, you could filter and then do, um, you know, just an aggregation over that. But we wanted to be able to do this and support grouping at the same time. So accumulating within a group. Um, so the sum over a particular group. And um, we've, we've leveraged this so you can do a lot of these operations um, over groups very specifically uh, multiple we've allowed mul multiple keys just like aggregation multiple keys and here we go okay sorry lost track here we go why is it called update by that's a kind of a great question um, it is similar to an update statement uh, it does not modify your current row set or the data in the columns it adds additional columns but it does do grouping and some uh, effective aggregation we are able to define operations accumulating like a for example volume by symbol in a in a uh, ticking truck stock trading symbol table uh, you can also do aggregations effectively you can apply these operations over zero key columns and what we mean by that is where you don't specify a key column so the grouping is over the entire data set and so it, it, kind of matching the two terms today it's update by because it does update and aggregation kind of mesh together here's what the operations that we have that are implemented now and these are available to every user in 0.19.1 release cumulative sum cumulative minimum and maximum a cumulative product a forward fill which is will um, propagate values and replace null values and then some exponential moving average functionality uh, this is this is interesting because you can do it either row-based versus ticks, or do time-based, specifying a duration in nanoseconds or minutes and seconds. We have some new operators planned, and there's an entire class of operations that are in work right now, work in progress, uh, rolling sum, rolling group, rolling minimum and maximum products, averages, weighted sum, weighted averages, and then we're planning on doing an exponential moving sum, and these can actually be extended and added as needed. What is interesting about the rolling, it's a kind of a different type of operation because each of these operations will allow you to specify both a time or a tick based window. And it will apply the specified operation to that window. And it's not limited to just the reverse direction. You can, for example, do a rolling sum that rolls up the last 20 minutes of trades and um, you know, looking historically, the next five minutes of trades as well. So it's a pretty powerful feature. And there's, um, we can add operations fairly easily. Here's an example of the overall calling syntax in Python. You can see where sales is our table that we're um, going to be modifying, creating a new table out of. 
the update by call signals that we're going to be uh, initializing or, or, or enabling this feature, calling this feature. But then each of the operations that we're going to specify have their own little functional SQL, functional calling syntax. So cumulative sum is the Python version of this. And what it's going to do is compute a cumulative sum over the column units sold and then add a new column to the table called sum of units sold. Similarly, the minimum unit price will appear in the min unit price column. And we're going to do an EMA um, of the unit of the unit price, express it into EMA unit price, and that'll be a tick decay based one. And we're going to do all of this using the region to group um, and to separate our results. The groovy syntax is actually extremely similar. Uh, here we go. So update by, you can see, I don't really have to go into this too deeply, cumulative sum, cumulative minimum, EMA. This is an overloaded function compared to the very expressive Python syntax. In this case, we're specifying just the number of rows for the EMA to operate over. In the second one, we're actually t expressing which uh, column we're going to be using for our timestamps and specifying that we're going to be looking, doing a, a duration, a 15 minute reverse looking uh, EMA. Okay, so I'm actually going to jump right into what the, uh, the usage of this. And here we have, um, I'm doing this in Python. First, I'm going to bring in these imports and then a sample table I have. If this isn't big enough to anybody, please let me know. Hopefully, this is, this is large enough to be seen easily. So here's a simple table. It has a region, a type, unit sold, unit price, and order date, similar to those columns that you saw. This has uh, 2 million records. I didn't want to do a too small of an example. And um, these dates are uh, in, in ascending order. So let's first just run one of these update by operations, cumulative sum, cumulative min, and an EMA. This is a zero key operation. I'm not going to specify a group by. And so when I run this, you'll get here's our new columns that have appeared. So one thing to note is all of these columns still exist. We are just appending new columns to it. This still has exactly 2 million rows. But now we have a cumulative sum of our units sold. We have the minimum unit price and then an EMA of 50 units um, over this. And as I scan through, you'll see minimum price is well latched, but units of sold continues to accumulate till we get to the end. About 2 million throw, we have about 10 billion units sold. We have our minimum, and then our EMA is still operating properly. So I didn't specify, um, because I didn't specify, any grouping operations, this final row is the accumulation of all of the units sold. But let's just take the same operation and add in the region. And here we have the, the unit price, the EMA, the sum of the units sold is now per region. So uh, Australian Oceania, Oceania will accumulate separate from all of the other choices. So we, let's just look at these sub-Saharan Africa. We can see that the units sold is the accumulation of the units sold. And as we get, scroll to the bottom, our EMA is individual to each region. Unit price is the minimum of each region and our final operations. Okay, so that's on static data. And that's pretty cool. This just has, but let's go ahead and just hack together a ticking table for this. And this is probably not great syntax, but what this does is just every second, it'll express a row from this table into a new table called um, sales ticking. And so here's your data as it's appearing. Again, same operation as before. We're gonna just throw in some minimum and an EMA, but we're gonna run it over the ticking data. So now we have an accumulation of data as the data is appearing. So this just shows that it's going to happen on any kind of live or ticking data table. Uh, here's the grouped version of the same call. 
and now each of these operations are not over this is this is very specific to the region so we can find that these two europe ones will well accumulate into each other and then just to show that you can also do time-based um, emas over this ticking data here is a time-based 15 minute time-based ema the time base the time column time set column we're going to use is order date and so let's execute that all right so now we've got running averages a running ema based on the time so this is a 15 minute running ema and we're still grouping over all of this all of this data all right that's Pretty much the existing op existing operators are expressed in Python. The ones we're working on have not received their Python uh, mapping yet because they're still in flex. So I'm gonna have to switch over and run my Groovy version to show you rolling group. So one moment to do that. We're gonna kill this and launch. Our groovy examples all right so here we are we're in, now going to run the groovy examples i could show you the same examples that we saw before but it's probably not that interesting so i'm going to concentrate on the rolling operations so here's the same file and a couple of important imports for java and here's the ticking sales table all right so um, I'm going to show you the cumulative sum and how it would differ from a rolling sum. I can show this over 10 items. This is zero key. I'm not going to specify a region. But if I execute this on the ticking table, we'll see that the sum of the units is accumulating. And in fact, the rolling sum of this is the same for the first 10 rows. But after that, we are dropping off rows in the rolling window. And in this case, I've only specified a backward-looking window. But as I mentioned before, your window operations are not limited to just the reverse direction. So in fact, this next one is a forward-looking rolling sum. And um, you can actually see, if I pick an individual record and follow it, it actually accumulates as new rows are added or appended to the end of the table. This just shows that it is actually increasing as new rows are added and then you can both look forward and reverse and i'm sorry i, I may wasn't know if it was clear but this is a 10 row rolling sum so 10 rows forward 10 roll, rows backward and again these first 10 will be fairly static but the final ones will be looking backwards and forwards so they will actually increase as the rows enter the table all right um, the region based i'll just run both of these are the same or these are those are zero key versions of course you can still apply the grouped operations to your rolling window operations so now these are rolling windows within the very specific regions that you specified as your grouping items and again forward and reverse all work in the same so any individual row that you have is the original row you started with but we have now added a cumulative sum operation to the very specific um, grouping of keys that we specified and we are using a rolling window forward and backwards looking those were tick based or row based operations i can do all of the same specifying durations and using a window, a time window base. So in this case, I'll just specify that we're gonna be using order date as our time base column. And by executing this, now our rolling sum on this ticking data is the rolling sum of everything, every order placed, in this case, it's zero key, so every order placed within a 15-minute window of the current timestamp as it marches along. 
Again, time can be forward and backward. So here's the forward looking version, but using time as a time window. So for the next 15 minutes, this row will continue to accumulate and then it'll achieve static, a static value later. And to demonstrate that time can be forward and reverse looking as well, let's just operate this. And so now we're, we're this final iteration is grouped by region using forward and backward time window based on from 15 minutes of the timestamp for the current row. All right, so that's most of my demonstration. I'm gonna pop back over, but I think the next thing I was going to do was just try to answer any questions you have. And I'll open up to questions. Great. So Larry, this looks great. Can you, uh, can you give us kind of a mental framework from a user perspective about how to think about performance in these operations? Sure, so uh, of course it, it's unavoidable that in uh, when you're inserting data into a middle of it into the middle of the table that you'll be forced to perform the engine is forced to perform all succeeding calculations but there's a lot there's optimizations in this of course so if you have a append only table which so many time-based sources are then it will calculate the engine is smart enough to calculate only the time or or rows that are affected by the incoming data and that's true for the rolling window cases and for the just pure cumulative cases. So if a, a rolling window operation will not be recalculated unless data item enter that fit into its uh, window definition. So it's actually quite efficient. Okay, and then um, in terms of thinking about static versus real time, what, what performance consideration should be considered? Uh, great question. So of course, real-time data, um, there's, there's when, when things are static, we can compute, we can bin everything into the regional, uh, in my case, the region option, but the group operators only one time and not perform that cost with every incoming data acquisition. So it's more efficient, obviously, to perform this on static. We can optimize those cases, but it's still fairly efficient in the case of uh, append only data or even you know just uh, any kind of rolling up roll up data that comes into the uh, this update by operation then the 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 row sets each each grouping is organized into buckets and so there's a maintenance of the bucket row sets that has to be done as an unavoidable cost in order to keep your calculations correct so just with refreshing data, if you have a very large number of buckets, there is additional overhead for maintaining and keeping all that straight. Now you mentioned um, some particular operations uh, with Group I that haven't been wrapped in Python yet. And I'm just curious, I know that we have some upcoming holidays and stuff, but um, do we have any sort of estimated time frame on when uh, we might see those come up um, in or be uh, wrapped in Python. So it's worse that they haven't, worse than the fact that they haven't been wrapped. They're actually um, still in implementation. So the rolling sum was demonstrable. Rolling group is in progress, but the, the minimum maximum project product and average are still not available on the Groovy side or in the Java side as well. So it'd be it'd be great if we get more of these added by the end of the year <clears throat> hopefully the entire list is complete by january awesome all right anything else all right well i don't want to take full credit for this this was uh implemented in dhe andy did and most of the work for the cumulative operations, I've been trying to extend it with the rolling group and the rolling the rolling operations, and it's it's a it's quite a project. It's been very fun. Oh, there's Andy. Thank you, Andy. Thank you for your hard work.
Thanks for making it even more awesome. This is really cool. I'm super excited about this rolling stuff. It's really great. Yeah. Good luck. Good job. This is great. Harry. All right. If there's no other questions, I think we can sign off. Thanks.